Who was the players that you thought were going to make it bigger than they actually did in that team? I would say Ravel, Ravel Morrison. Well, this guy was crazy, man. He would come up in the first team and start to dribble everybody. And everybody was shocked. When you watch him play, you would, you would expect to, him to be the next thing, you know. As an Italian guy, I, I had also had the dream to play for uh, Serie A. Sir Alex didn't want me to go there at any cost. And I remember before one game, I just go into his room in, uh, in the Lowry Hotel to beg him to send me there. Wow. And that was uh, probably the biggest mistake I did in my career. They can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man stepped in a room with legends Rio and Steve, you know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League He's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is Vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know this Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's episode of Vibe with Five. Now, this one is a little bit different, Rio. This man that we have on today, right, he scores a winner, right, against Aston Villa in the 08 09 season that helped Man United win the Premier League. A crucial goal, wouldn't you say? Against Aston Villa. Wow. This guy made me like, you know, like there's certain goals that you just go crazy about. This yeah. was one of the goals that it was like, Changed the season. Yeah, and we all knew his name like after that game. Like just that one match changed everything. Kiko Makeda. Mr. Federico <laughs> Makeda. How you doing? Are you you good? Hello everybody. I'm good, man. I'm good. What about you? Yeah, man, we're good. We're good. Good to see you, man. You know what people have been talking about? We asked people who do we want to get on, and your name came up a lot. For someone who didn't stay at Man United for many, 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 many years, but still has a place in the heart of many of the fans. So we had to get you on, man. How are you doing? Yeah, that's good, good, man. My pleasure. All good, man. All good. My pleasure, man. That's good so to what, hear. What are you doing now? Where are you? I'm currently playing uh, Turkey. I just came two months ago. And uh, yeah, I just moved to another club after four years in Greece in Port Party, playing for Party Nikos. Now I'm here trying new, new experience, new league. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's Ankara Gucci, right? Um, excuse me, my yeah. Turkish is, pronunciation is not yeah. great. Um, yeah, also before, mine, man. So before we go into your career and the amazing stories, um, I just want to say, your Italy beating England. What's your thoughts on the current Italy team and what you've seen of England? Very quickly. I don't know, man. Italy is is it's been doing crazy things lately. I don't know after winning the Euros, then going out from the World Cup against Macedonia now, trying to rebuild and now they beat England. I'd, I don't know, man. It's weird, but, uh, <laughs> you know, the disappointment of not being in the World Cup is, is, too, is too big for, uh, for the Italians. At least you've won uh, a major championship. That's all I can say. In your, in a, in your lifetime. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? Get all that. That's all boring and negative. I want to just take you back to when you was a kid, man. And you, you signed for your local... You was born in Rome, yeah? He signed for Lazio. Yeah. What's that like for a young Italian kid from Rome signing for a club like Lazio? It's, a, it's like a dream, man, to be honest, because Rome is a big city. And uh, especially if you support this club, you want to play for this club. So mm. I, I joined the, the club just after two years I was playing football. So for me, it was, a, it was like a dream to, to, to go and play for my for my for the team I support, so that was it. It was amazing. And then you you turned sixteen years old, and listen, this is when I saw you. You come to Manchester United. Like, talk us through how the hell does a young kid from from Lazio in Rome turn up at Manchester United, and what was that? What was that like? It was weird. It was weird, man, because obviously I didn't expect it. And when they first talked to me about. Uh, this possibility to come to Manchester, I didn't even believe it because, you know, my life was uh, was in Rome. I had a lot of friends, family, so I was not even thinking to to go to go to England. But then things who, got who, to who who, um, who, sp who did they speak to? Did they direct message you, or did they message your family, or who was it? What happened? Oh, there was a scouter, David Williams. Oh. 
<laughs> was a scout. David Gilliam was coming to watch me even in training, and I don't know. It maybe if <laughs> he, he fell in love with me, you know. I was, <laughs> I, I, after training, he would just come to me and say, you know, Ferguson is my friend. This, you know, we will bring you to Manchester. And me, I was like, it, it wasn't making sense, you know. And, uh, mm. and uh, but you know, after things got more interested, you know, with the, with the time. We just got on uh, along and things got uh, better and better. So I start to believe there was a chance to 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 come to Manchester. Hmm. You came at um, sixteen. That was before you signed your first proper professional contract with United. There was some financial difficulty, wasn't there? Can you talk to us about that a little bit? Yes. There was financial uh, problem, but when I was in Rome, they we were talking about uh, one contract that you get as a youth team. And uh, when I get there, things were different. So it was not about the money, because when you're 16, you don't go to England for the money because they don't give you crazy money. You go there for the experience. But I also had to make sure my family would be living a little bit better than we were living in Rome. And by coming everybody to Manchester, the conditions were uh, worse than what were in Rome. So there was not the, the, the possibility to stay. So at this point, when the contract was different, we just decided to, to go back to Italy. And, uh, and then Ferguson came up and he told my family that, uh, he told my family that he would, fix, he would fix the situation and would make sure the club would give us uh, what they told us at the start. And uh, and that what, was what, it. Go on, sorry. What was your first conversation then with, uh, with Sir Alex Ferguson? How, how did you feel in that moment? Uh, for me, it was crazy. I mean, I was, I was a young kid and, you know, I remember my first day in Carrington coming to make breakfast and see you all guys eating together for me was crazy because when I was in last year, the things were completely different. We would train in a completely different pitch. We would never uh, be, in co be in contact with the first team player. So, you know, for me to be there and see you guys was something crazy. And then Ferguson came in straight away because David Will this David Williams, the scout that was apparently very close to him. And, uh, you know, he came to me and he started to, you know, give me the welcome and uh, it was something unreal. Wow. So, so you basically, you go straight into the under-18s team at Manchester United. And not just that, you scored the only goal of the game, a 1-0 away win against Barnsley. I mean, right now you're on cloud nine. Is what's it like at home with your family? What's the the feeling like that you've moved into England now? Yeah, the, the the choice of going to England was not easy, but I I went there for uh, with a purpose. You know, I didn't go there just to have an experience and see. Okay, let's see how it goes. That maybe I come back to Italy. I you know I moved all my family there because I wanted to try something. Uh, Amazing, and uh, you know, by by going there, I had my mind already fixed by what I had to do on the pitch with my family next to me, and uh, you know, that game was the the first step. You, you see, uh, uh, you you start you you move in, you start scoring, etc. You see, you said that you come and you're around the first team players. How I, I don't even remember exactly because there's so many young kids that come in at the time. How did the first team players receive you? Like, who were the guys that made you feel comfortable, etc.? Hey, you were one of them, Rio. To be fair, not because you're here, but you were always very close to the young players, and also Patrice because he was talking uh, in Italian. So. You know, they didn't have many, but you know, when you are in the reserves, you I think you and Patrice were uh, the two trying to help mostly the kids 
So that's what I what's what I'm, I remember mostly. Tell the truth, Makeda. Don't. What, what, do you, <laughs> what do you remember from him? What? How was he trying uh, to help the kids? I need more detail. No, Rio was always available, man. He was always available, and uh, you know, it made you feel always comfortable. You know, it's it's not easy to explain, but he was always there for you. You know, and. Uh, you know, also when you go home, he would tell your family. So he, you know, you know, Rio Ferdinand came to me, he talked to me. You know, it make me feel good, comfortable around the place, and it's something that uh, when you're a kid, you don't forget. To be to be honest. Now I'm go I'm gonna focus on the first team back in a second, but I wanna remember who was playing in your youth team at the time. Did you play with Paul Pogba at the, at the time? Uh, I had a couple of games with Paul. Yeah, but. I was always I was already in the first team at that time. Sometimes I would go back to to the reserves to play with him. But the, in my team, there was in the youth team was me, Danny Welbeck, and then it was uh, Robbie Brady, Matty James, Drinkwater. That was my actual uh, team. And how were from they the under, from the under eighteen to the reserves? And how were they as players? I mean, obviously, those guys, they've gone on to have amazing careers. Drinkwater, Premier League winner, Danny Welbeck, you know, a, amazing career in the Premier League. Um, of course, you said you played with Paul Pogba, who went on to become a, a global superstar. Could you see those talents with them when you're training? I could see the talents of a few of them, yeah, especially Paul and Danny. Danny, I love uh, Danny Welbeck. I loved him watch. You know the style he had. It was for me was a uh, was amazing. Then I was playing alongside him from the under 18s, and uh, I could see he had something special. Uh, also, the others were very good. Robbie Brady, uh, Danny Drinkwater, but I didn't expect Danny to to keep going like this. But he was a hard worker, and uh, this uh, paid off. So I'm very happy for him. Mm. Who was the players that you thought were going to make it bigger than they actually did in that team? I would say Ravel, Ravel Morrison. Ravel Morrison was a great, crazy talent. You know, I so remember talk about him what he used to do. Go on in the training and that. What was the stuff he used to do? Well, this guy was crazy, man. He would come up in the first team and start to dribble everybody, <laughs> and everybody was shocked. <laughs> And uh, you know, when you watch him play, you would you would expect to him to be the next thing, you know, and because he had everything. And the Man United team of then it was crazy players. So to come up in the first team and do the things he was doing, it was just crazy. When you um, you joined in the summer oh, sorry, of two thousand, sorry, 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 Steve. I told you a lot about him, innit? It's like you don't Man. understand how good this kid was. But it's everyone real that like, says it. It's, it's just, it's like, it just blew your yeah, mind. Yeah, real. It's not news. We all know. But yeah. it, it is mad though. But you know, like everyone talks about it, but it's, it's almost like you needed to be there to really see and understand what he was doing. And not was only in the video? reserve. Was you not doing real was... vlogs at the time and get a bit of video? No, we weren't, we weren't videoing the training. But it was like, and I used to go, and watch, sometimes if you come back from injury or something like that and go and train with the reserves, he would do even more stupid stuff with the reserves. He plays centre back sometimes in training, Kiko. No, yeah, he would just go and get the ball everywhere and you know start to do crazy things. Yeah. Wow. All right. So was it two thousand and seven, Somalia? You joined. Yeah, two thousand and seven. Yeah. So you're you're in the club as we go and win the double. You watch the first team win the Champions League. Is that intimidating yeah. for a young player? to think, how am I going to get into this team? Or do you think, I can't wait to get into this team? What's your mindset? Uh, I was in Moscow that night, also, watching the game with the fans. And you, know, you see this team and you you dream of being there. But you see, it's, it's almost realistic because nowadays the, the teams have uh, one, two strikers. Back then, Man United had four top strikers, so to imagine and get into this team was almost impossible. But of mm. course, you still have this, you know, dream factor that tell you, 
okay it, nothing is impossible but you will see and uh what was your what was your so, mindset um uh kiko when you used to come over to train with it with that team how did you how did you approach the training was you obviously because some kids would be scared or some kids would be like oh i'm not sure what to do what, what was you like well my, my first training with the first team was three days before my debut that was it that was the first time i ever trained with the first team how did you and, do and uh it was nice because i tell you the story because i was prepared a little bit because we had a game with the reserves in newcastle in the night and in the morning a sir alex comes to me i was in a bike with davide and we had a problem with flowers Rune was suspended, uh, Berba, Berba was injured. So Fergie came to me and he told me that if I would do well in the night, I would probably be on the bench on Sunday. But I, would never, uh, I had never trained with the first team before, so I was shocked to listen to this. And you know, that was the moment I was waiting for forever, you know, and that was the main reason I came to Manchester just to play even one minute with the first team mm. and that and that was the chance and that night uh, i scored a hat trick against newcastle <laughs> <laughs> and that Easy. was at training yeah. 6 a.m like out where's fergie at yeah, yeah. <laughs> i scored a, i just made sure that uh i had my place on the bench on sunday yeah. Boss, did you see the game last night? Yep. Okay. Hat trick. Hat trick. Let you know. I mean, I'm, just I'm the three just... goals. Don't worry about but then you go to train. You score a hat trick like that. Then you go to train with the first team. What's the feeling like when you go on the training pitch and you're alongside all the players? And the speed training. Hey. I want to know: is there a different speed, the intensity? Yeah, for sure. The intensity was three times faster, and you know. But you, you just get along with it. The first. 30 minutes you don't probably catch it but you know you try to be in your position and uh, do your job and uh, to be there was was something uh, was something great for me especially after this game and uh, but the training were not uh, were not intensive because we had a game they had a game after two days or so only make uh, the two days pre-game trainings Mm. So let's talk about you go to the training. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go that far, yeah. I want you to be honest. Mm. You, you've seen loads of young players come across under 18s, under 23s. They come to the first team training session. Players usually say within the first five minutes, they can tell who's got it and who doesn't have it. What's your thoughts of Federico when he comes across? Don't lie. No, I always watch the young players anyway. I used to watch youth team games. Kiko will know I'll come to Old Trafford in the FA Youth Cup or I'd come and watch the games on a Saturday at Carrington mm -hmm. after we finished training, watch 30 minutes or something. And, I all, and the whole squad, especially when a foreign player would come in or a good, any good young player in, in the youth system, the first team will know, we'll find out. And so I always kept my eye out. And it was, again, like you said, him and Danny Welbeck were like two like different strikers. But this guy was mad finisher, mm -hmm. like clinical finisher, score all type of goals, tap-ins, bang it from inside, anywhere in the box, dangerous around the box. And you knew he could finish. And the manager, you'd hear the manager say, and you saw the manager's quotes at times, this guy, this guy's the best finisher at the club. Really? In a, a period of the time, he would say Kiko was the best finisher. Just instinctive, he just knows how to finish. And he was... Um, so you knew there's other parts of his game that that a Welbeck or someone might be more stronger, mm -hmm. but in terms of finishing, he was he was he was the real deal. Do you agree with that? If Rio says so, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Tell me about Aston Villa because this goal is like it's folklore. Yeah, this is like a, a a ridiculous goal. You get you get told you're coming on for your debut. Talk us through that moment. How do you feel? What's his instructions? Uh, not many instructions, to be fair, because we just went 2-1 down and I was expecting to go inside the last five minutes, you know, because you bring striker on the last five minutes to grab the game. If can I, can I just set the scene for everyone who doesn't know? We're going head-to-head -head with Liverpool, I think it is, for the league in 2009, aren't we? And it's tight, isn't it? Mm. 
Yeah. That we got to keep winning. This is this is April, isn't it? This is early yeah. April. So this is critical moments. We're two one down. We're at home. It's Aston Villa. Go on, as you were. And we expect to come inside the last five minutes. And that was a dream for me, man, because you know to play five minutes with the first team was amazing. And as soon as I think about it, Fergie just called me to go inside the last thirty minutes, and I was shocked. I, I didn't know if I was talking to me or Danny because Danny was next to me, and he played for the first team before. So I thought he was talking to him. And when I turned my head to Danny, he shout again like he wanted to kill me. He <laughs> said my name. He said, you have to go inside. So I just go inside. And uh, yeah, that's the moment. <laughs> mm. So when that ball comes to you and it falls to you, yeah, what, what, what's the thinking? What's Kiko Makeda thinking right there? And that's hard, hard to explain. You know, I was very happy with the way I was playing. I came on, you know, with a lot of hunger, you know, I wanted to to make the most out of it. And I was feeling there was something more to do because it was like a written story. And uh, I remember going to the box and I was very tired because then, you know, the pressure, the, the adrenaline and everything make me, make my body dead. You know, the first <laughs> game when you want to do well, you know, when you want to do well, at this last minute I was dead. So I tried to, I received the ball from uh, Gary Neville outside the box and I tried to, to flick it. And I just lose the ball because my leg just shaked, you know, and I didn't have the power to make the last step. Then the ball goes out to Giggs and he gives this ball that honestly is, it's an amazing ball, vertical ball and not easy for the striker because there's not many things you can do that. But it's just the ball that you you use, you can use to to make something magic. And uh, I think the instinct was, was to just turn and shoot. And uh, we all know how he ended up. Who was the centre half behind you? Because you absolutely sent him home, whoever it was. Yeah, he was gone. I think he was, I don't know. Ah, he was young. Because I played with him in, Qu- in Quiz Park Ranger after, after, and he reminds me. <laughs> you know, he said, no, I, I was the, I was the defender. You you sent him to the to the referent <laughs> <laughs> that day. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, I remember the celebrations feeling. for that. I ended up about five or six seats down from where I was. I was in the opposite end. I was in the K stand. It went absolutely off with that. Did you ever have a, a feeling after that goal? Did you ever get that type of feeling that that's so high again? Mm, no. Wow. To be honest, no. It was Imagine too much. having that feeling at the beginning of your career like that's, that. It's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. It was too much. Man. Oh, man. So then what, what, what happens after that? Obviously... Wait, you know, sorry. What does the manager say after yeah, the game? Yeah. Did he say thank you? Did he say like... Did he, what, did he hug you? Did he kiss you? What did he say? Did he yeah, it was like Liverpool. He, he was hugging me all over, man. He was crazy <laughs> happy. Because I remember you guys were coming from two defeats. And Liverpool was one point uh, on top in this, in this yeah. uh, game. So if we wouldn't win it, then things would have been uh, difficult. But we, so would have given the was... we would have given them the advantage, yeah? Mm-hmm. And the feeling in the city then, if Liverpool had win, won the title then... Like, like I don't know if there was any more pressure on any title than that one because of who it was, because it was Liverpool. Wow. It was like, yeah. and that's why the, the, the feeling about that goal is so powerful because mm. what it meant, if we didn't get that that goal, advantage Liverpool. Crazy. Yeah, and this is the fifth everything. goal in a 5 nil win in August. Yeah. This actually really, really, really meant something. This changed was momentum. a huge call. You scored a few more anyway that season, didn't you? You kept us rolling. I scored the next one in Su- mm. at Sunderland. The two oh, one. Mate, if yeah. we were doing if we were doing video content, I'd have said some outrageous shit about him in them days. The way he started. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I thought, it when I first saw that Sunderland goal, I remember I thought it was an accident. I thought the ball came, hit you, and it went in. But it was actually you well, meant finish. it. Yeah, I put I put my leg there, but the, it was the magical moment, you know. 
whatever you do with the bow just go inside yeah but yeah. uh it's crazy do you know what it's more uh, what about kiko what i liked he said it was it was a positive for him he didn't really care mm. would you say that's correct kiko you didn't really you sh your body language was like he didn't like he's playing with the first team he would come and go you right, we are really? you right, guys like he wasn't like timid oh, yeah. he was like just this Normal. is football yeah it, which you, you need that as a young player coming in mm. yeah yeah true you need but you have to keep it also because mm. i was a bit too confident which is very good for a young player but also a little bit arrogant you know and if you don't keep your uh, level of performance high then uh, these these things can uh, go against you and that's what uh, probably happened to me after yeah can you go a bit deeper on that what what what, what regrets do you have about your time at man united if you do have any <clears throat> i have regrets of not keep working hard as before us getting into the first team why you know for me because when i get to the first team you know for me it was everything amazing you know and uh, but when you when you're doing well i don't know how to explain but you're uh, you're your uh, concentration drops mm. and that doesn't allow you to keep working for something bigger that that's what was the missing thing for me i didn't work for the next bigger thing in my time man united because if that's one regret i have is, is this one i should have done a lot more also with the other chances i had in the first team if they were 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes of starts because i had a lot of them I think I played the first two years around uh, 40 games. And for mm. eight, 18 years old, it's not. It's not it's normal. It's a lot. It's not it normal. It's a easy? lot because. I don't know if it comes too easy. I was. I knew I was, uh, I was very good physically. My character was, you know, as Rio said, confidence. But I had to keep going in terms of wanted more. Do you think, Kiko, maybe you got the big opportunity, you took it with both hands, you had an amazing moment with the goal against Villa and you started scoring after as well. And you think, actually, this is easy. I don't need to... And, and you're thinking, there's, there, you didn't set yourself new targets after that. You were just satisfied with what you just achieved and you was enjoying that moment too much. Yeah, I was enjoying this moment, yes, too much. But I didn't think it was easy because... After those games, I didn't have the chance to play every week, you know, because the players I had in front of me were unbelievable players. And I would play for the first team once every month. So to repeat the same things, the same goals, you know, this, it was not easy every mm. time because it was too high to happen. So, so also this one was uh, was a difficult Thing to 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 keep. Mm. But so then, what happens afterwards? You have a chat with Sir Alex um, after a, a period of time, and you know you have a few loan offers in the Premier League. Uh, but you're very keen to return to Sampdoria. Which offers yeah. did you have in the Premier League, and why did you want to return to Italy so bad? I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I know. I had uh, I had Sunderland and uh, Everton to go along the six months, but I took Roy like. Was well. Huh? Was that while Roy Keane was there? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. Carry on. But, but uh, as an Italian guy, I I was also had the dream to play for uh, Serie. A. And I took the thing easy, you know, I say, OK, I go there six months. I do whatever I do, and then I come back to Manchester. It's only six months. But I want to try this new league, this league that I've been growing up to. And uh, I went there with a lot of enthusiasm. Sir Alex didn't want me to go there at any cost. And I remember before one game, I just go into his room in uh, 
in the Lowry Hotel to beg him to send me there. Wow. And that was uh, probably the biggest mistake I did in my career so far. Wow. What did he, what did he say? Was he saying, like, listen, that you, can't, you shouldn't go, it's not good for your career? Yeah, because he probably knew the pressure was a lot. They didn't look after me like they would do in England. And I was a young kid. I was 19 years old. So he knew it was a completely different world. And if I would go there and I didn't do well, they would just hate me because I was coming from Man United. And uh, that's what uh, happened exactly. Just to go back to Man United and your time there, like just like a lot of people want to know about like, the, the players and stuff. Who, who for you was the the best players that you played with at United? Who surprised you the most? And there were many, real. There were many. Okay, Ronaldo for me was from a different planet. <laughs> Ronaldo was something uh, crazy to even think about. It. And uh, but as a striker, I loved Waza. Waza for me was, you know, amazing player. And Berba also because technically, Berba was you know the one I would look, I would look to you know because he's also a little bit the style I play, you know, like like him more or less. And uh, but yeah, I would say Ronaldo was the one who. We just was out out of a different world. Did he did he ever talk to you, or do you have any good little stories about when you were hit together with him? Yeah, with Ronnie we talk, we spoke. I didn't stay a lot because I came to the first team in April and uh, only the last two months. But I remember we were in a in a bus <coughs> in the same uh, in the same seats, you know, in the fourth seat, mm -hmm. you know, there, and we would talk sometime. But you know, it was always kind and gentle with me like like everybody in the in this team because i think the strength of this team was was this 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 mostly you know every player would uh, would be next to each other even if you were young and um, if you are like this at the end uh, you you have the success and that's what uh, this team had sometimes rio says that he was the hardest trainer but I don't know if it's that i don't believe you but from your eyes from someone who's coming from the youth team and you're looking at his training was it like is he just naturally good or was he actually training hard like the stories that us the fans hear uh, this is the the kind of play you have to look into because as i said before about myself of not wanting more this guy had everything won everything and still wanted more you know i remember him going from the gym after training to swimming one hour and me i was there doing jacuzzi with the other players you know after training which is normal <laughs> and he was just swimming for one hour up and down up and down and if back then i didn't have this view this mentality you know to to think oh look at this guy man. i should do the same probably mm. and if i go back then you know i would i would look into him like uh, an example I'd probably follow every Little step it was it was making because Kiko, that was you know something you, unbelievable. Kiko, you know when you uh, you you come into the change room with the first team as well. Just talk about what that what's that like when you come into the change room and you sit and you're there and you you're seeing all the people you probably looked up to. For a young player, how is that for you? Like, is it is it difficult? Is it a hard situation, or is it be quite comfortable? It was not easy. It was not easy because. It's like you go to the home of someone else, you know, and <laughs> you don't know how to act. For me, it was a great moment, but I remember I was very shy with this. I didn't mm. talk a lot. I didn't know how to to behave, and it was uh, it was amazing to be there. But you know, for the first two three couple of months, was not uh, was not easy because you, know, you are. Uh, scared of what you could say or what you might do you know <laughs> you don't know the habits of the change room and so you just stay there in your place go out and <laughs> come back and go out again <laughs> <laughs> which player was the most intimidating because you had Vidic you've got 
Giggs, I imagine Giggs is quite intimidating in training and in, in, uh, I imagine Paul Scholes could be a little bit as well with, with the things that all of those have won. Who was the most intimidating player to, to maybe speak to or, or to train against? Uh, I would say Gary Neville. Really? <laughs> Gary Neville. <laughs> yeah, Gary in training was... Yeah, Sometimes we kick you out of nowhere and uh, you don't know why. Maybe the ball was on the other side of the pitch and they would just kick you. <laughs> so, bully, bully. <laughs> yeah, it was bullying. It was bullying people, yeah. But the rest, no. The rest, uh, you know, I had good character with the, with training. I would just like to go against Vida, against Rio, and I was finding the interesting, you know, like motivation uh, trainings to just train against them. It was for me like something... Uh, Amazing to to try and improve, try to beat them. You know, it was not easy, of course, but that's how we go out in training against them. Hmm. Uh, now, Federico, so you go out to Sampdoria. Obviously, you went there. You saw it as the opportunity to replace Antonio Cassano, who at the time, I remember him, you know, big player, big name. Um, you start off very well. You're scoring goals. But then after a while, you go 14 games without a league goal and you're relegated into Serie B. Obviously, the Italian fans, they start to go against you, etc. It's not easy. You come back to United. What does Fergie say to you then? Is he saying, not in a bad way, but is he saying, I told you so? Does he have his arm around the shoulder? Because you went for several loans afterwards. What was it like yeah. when you came back? Hey, when I came back, I knew things would change. Fergie used to love me. You know, he just put me inside without even thinking about who was in front of me or uh, you know and after this i feel like i disappointed him by not listening to him and when i came back i could feel it and uh, my mindset was different i was dead because i was coming back from an experience that uh, hurt me a lot i didn't expect it you know when you go somewhere and you 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 expect it completely different than is the opposite that was what happened to me and when i came back things were difficult not i was still young i was 20 years old but my mindset was different because i was dead i didn't feel confident as before as when i left you know when i left i felt so confident i didn't think any player was better than me when i left because i was young i was confident and when i came back after all the critics and things, I feel like I was shit player. You know, mm. that's what what I thought. And from there, things start to get difficult because of this of this difficulty I had. It's crazy how important the loan is. The loan is so important where you go, where you choose to go. You have to go to a club where yes, the manager wants you, but the style of football is important that it suits your game that the environment that they have in on a day-to-day -day basis is going to suit you. You've got to have do a lot of research before you go on loan. A lot of young players just go where they're told. And I think passion. it's, yeah, you've got, you got to go where you know is going to suit the style of football you're going to play or it's going to bring something out of your game that you, you're missing. There's so many factors in loans. But if you go into a loan without knowing the detail, you can end up the way Kiko felt. Can I ask you, when he came back from loan, could you see a difference in his aura? Um, could you see that this is someone that... Yeah, I, I felt Kiko was a bit shyer when he came back. He, his personality was still the same with us off the pitch, but I think <clears> on <throat> the pitch, he was a bit different. He didn't want to show. He wasn't as he wasn't as um, as open and as expressive as he was before. And, and I didn't know at the time because we're all just like in a rat race. We're very like this. We just want to win, want to play. You don't care too much about anybody else. But looking back, I can see, yes, there was a difference... And even even the training ground, you'd walk around sometimes, you'd go around, it wasn't the same Makeda, you know what I mean? It wasn't the same Makeda that I knew. So what do you say when he comes back from training? Do you say, do the players say unlucky for getting relegated or do you not even care at the time, Man United? What's it like? I actually didn't even know that Sam Doria got relegated then. Wow. And that Kiko was part of it. Because you don't, I don't care about everything else that's going on. <laughs> Serious, it's crazy. Everybody is very selfish. Yeah. You give time, yeah. but you're selfish in the main mm -hmm. to, about what you're doing. So mm -hmm. I didn't even know that. But you, you want the young players to do well. I always, and I was always like, come on, okay, like in training or in, in, in games and stuff. Mm -hmm. But listen, it, it's just your your route is your route. 
and then he had to find his other route and he ends up you end up going on loan to a few different clubs you went and even played for Oli no at Cardiff yeah I went there permanent yeah what was that like my... Oli got was a... the next month didn't it yeah he got sacked after a month <clears throat> I went there because of him I was coming out from a good loan in Birmingham, Birmingham. City at school yeah yeah and uh, my contract you know I was finished and I thought I had to restart from the championship because for me now was important back then it was important to play games and score goals, mm -hmm. not be at the bigger club and you know not playing regularly. For me, what I understood it was important to go somewhere where I could show my quality. Mm. And with Dolly, I worked in the reserve, and for me, it was the perfect time. And uh, <clears throat> but yeah, after a month, it was sucked because Cardiff. Also, uh, they had some problem with the club, did and you, uh, you know. Did, did you expect Oli to go on after working with him in the reserves and working him with uh, in the at Cardiff for the short time you did? Did you expect him to go on and, and manage Man United the way he did? I didn't expect it. No, I could see Oli was good. I liked him, especially for striker. He would give you attention. He would give you confidence. So you could see he was good coach. He had good ideas. Sometimes for players, it's more important to to have a coach who gives you everything, the, the tactics, you know, these kind of things, because... And Ole was all about it. And uh, But I didn't expect him to go to Manchester United, to be honest. Hmm. Now, you was able to revive your career uh, at Panathinaikos, which was good. You did really well there. Um, in 2018, you scored 11 goals in 28 appearances. Um, you know, you scored fantastic goals, uh, completed 100 appearances with the club. Uh, you, you had a very happy time there. What was it that made you fall in love with football again? How did that happen? Was that your best spell in your career, you think, as well? Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Especially because I scored goal year after year. So that was the important. You know, but before going there, I went to the Italy second division and I thought my career was over hmm. because uh, I didn't have this motivation anymore and willing to go again. And, you know, it's hard to find motivation when you come from a big club and you're playing in front of uh, three, four hundred people every Saturday where I was wow. playing second division. So I was, I didn't know what to do, to be honest. And, uh, but I had to find something because I had a baby, I had a family, I still had the talent. And I had to find something. So I started to work with uh, with a mental coach. I tried. I said, let me try this one because, you know, you never know. When you are dead inside, you don't know what to do. And you try everything. So one guy came up to me. He's my age. And he came up to me after one game. And he just started to tell me that he could help me with something. And me, I start to go after him. You know, I say, okay, I don't have nothing to lose. And I go and try this one. What can I lose? Nothing. So mm. I, I start to work with him. And I've seen improvement. I start to get my confidence back. I start to work physically more. Start to work after look after my diet my everything and i see my game changing again so after this spell at novara I, had, I was without a team but my confidence was back up and that was the most important thing for me and when i got the call up from uh, party i i knew i was going to to succeed because i was uh, ready physically and mentally and that was amazing for me what 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 type of things did he did he kind of revive in you? Like what 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 type of techniques even was he was was he just letting you look at yourself more deeply or what was it? Yeah, I was just looking to myself. I would work on things of, about my characters. I would work on things inside the game, football. I start to work with the with with. It's like I work with the team, Rio like with a fitness coach, with a match analyst, oh. with, uh, you know, I, I, I had a team around me and that uh, made me focus even more on my 
on myself or what I had to do, not what I had around me. And that mm. uh, made a difference. Wow. What's the um, the fans like? I can, from watching from the outside, Panathinaikos looks like an awesome place to play football. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big club, man. It's a big club, amazing fans. And when I was there, they had some problems. But I didn't care because I had more problems than them. <laughs> so, I, so together we went back up. And uh, but the club is just the people there, the life. It's a big club. It's a club that deserves to play Champions League every year because of what they or what they offer. It's a, it's it's just a big club. Now. Um... I've got a couple more questions for us before we wrap this up. First question I want to ask you is, what advice do you have for young players? You know, people that are coming up and, you know, the career may be going really well or maybe not going very well. Uh, they could have had the loan experiences such as yourselves. What are the key pieces of advice that you would give uh, upcoming footballers and even current ones? For me, the biggest advice I would give is to never doubt themselves. Because once you start to doubt yourself, you are, you are gone. Your mind is dead. So to keep working, keep believing in what you can do. And, and that's it. Just be consistent in what, uh, in what they are doing. Even if they don't see results yet, you know, they should keep going and, uh, and, and keep going. Because at some point, the result will come. Five-a-side. Yeah, okay. Give us your for your whole career you've had, give us your best five aside team. No goalkeepers. Five no, no goalkeepers. The goalkeepers don't count. Okay. Five aside team. Wow. Is this gonna be all United players? <laughs> no, maybe not. We see. This must be some good lads that you played like under 21s in <laughs> Yeah. No, no, man. There will, be, there, will, there, will, there will not be United players, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Five I'm carrying that ball, obviously. I would put Rio. Because Rio technically also was, you know, top. Right, left. Chopping people. And Vida <laughs> also, because he would kill people. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, the two bucks okay. are there. And then we put Scorsi, Ronaldo, and uh, Rune. We are five, eh? Yeah, mm. that's five. Wow, good team. Wow. Decent team, that's the... Not bad, not bad. You happy you're making all these teams, eh? Oh, mate. Just to just to give it, give people a bit of insight, for a striker, what was so good about playing with Scorsi, even in training for you? Uh, Scorsi was, uh, was amazing. You would just play these vertical balls all the time. If you make a movement in behind, he would give you the ball. And, you know, it's, it's a dream player to play alongside with because as soon as you make one movement, you just see it and give you the ball. So there's not many players around who can do this. Mm -hmm. And just finally on yourself, yeah, as a striker, and for any young strikers we have watching this, we have loads of young players that watch. like. With your, what, was you naturally um, somebody who knew how to put the ball in the back of the net or did you have to work at doing that and work on your movements and instinct where to be in the box? I think it was natural. I think it was natural. But I start to understand the game when I was 14 years old. I was working with a coach who, who started to teach me all these kind of movements to do in the box, in and around the box. But the finishing, I think, were... Uh, we're natural since I'm uh, 10, 11 years old. So mm. I always, I always found it uh, easy to to finish him from uh, since I was young. Mm. Wow. Well, Kiko, man, listen, it's been good to speak to you, man, and listen to your journey. It's been a unique and interesting journey. And listen, thank you for your time, man, and good luck for whatever you choose to do next, man. Thank you, man. I still have some time to play yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm looking exactly. For so when you I come to England, let us know, man. I, have to, I need to see you, man. I I'm will, gonna man. Come to I will. I'm going to come and see you. Let's do it, man. We'll fix it, man. It'll be my right. pleasure, man. Cool. Thank you. Good to see you, man. Thank, Thank you very, you very much, 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 boys. Been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. See ya. Thank you, man. See ya. All right. Man. Top man, Kiko. Man, that was, that was something else, isn't it? 
No, he's a, he's a good kid, man. I mean, he, he obviously understands he's made mistakes in his time and mm-hmm. it, it didn't go as planned at Man United. But what I loved about him is his resilience. Mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. any young player, any player watching who's in even in the middle of their career, you're going to go through moments. There's going to be down times in your career, but it's you've got to, like you said, you've got to remain consistent. You've got to believe. You've got to look at yourself, analyse mm-hmm. and keep going. And, and he's done that. Because a lot of players, like some like that, will fade away mm-hmm. and they don't come back. You have to show character and personality yeah. and you have to give him props for that. He's done really well, really From well. From what happened in Serie B, it sounded like that could have really finished right there and then. I think yeah. that showed yeah. some serious character to come back from from that. And he did mm. do well, like legitimately well, not just like well for whatever. He did legitimately mm. well in um, in Panathinaikos. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not seeing any of the what's going on in Turkey for him but I hope he does well do you know if yeah. he got a medal in 2009 um, I don't I'm not no, sure how I many games did he play he didn't play 10 you yeah you've got to play 10 games so you don't like some you players you can request them like... can't you because didn't Fergie request Henrik Larsson won he didn't play yeah one. yeah I'm sure I'm sure the manager would have done that but even even the way he speaks do you know what's mad about Fergie as well he's a young 16, 17, 18 year old kid mm-hmm but the, the, you see the amount of contact that the first team manager has with these people and their families. That's why, that's, that's why and, and that contributes to his greatness, is that no matter how far down the pyramid you are at the football club, he has his paws and tentacles on you. But it, it's not just because you're here, but it looks like you and the other first teamers also had the same interest, you know, which is unique. You're not going to find that in every club. Yeah, and you, yeah, you, it's, it's about the manager recruiting the right mm-hmm. people even before players who then become part of that culture and then drive that culture within. And like you said, you don't realize when you're a player that you're, you're part of that mm. making young players feel comfortable, but it's just you doing what you feel is right. So, cause you see a bit of yourself. I always mm. used to see a bit of myself and a young kid coming in the changing room and think, Oh, you know what? It is hard. It is uncomfortable. Mm. It is um, intimidating sometimes. And I used to try and soften that that initial mm. contact with a first team. Because walking in through, opening the door to get go into that first team changing room, mate, daunting. it's daunting. I've, I've heard both sides of this story from you, Rio, where some young players would come to the door and be like, whoa, 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 you're not allowed in there. Out you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but the ones, you know, if you don't knock the door and you're not meant to be in there, then you get asked a question or you get told, listen, well, you, don't, you, you don't rate them. Yeah, you get out. You do. Yeah. <laughs> Come back when you've proved you're good oh, enough. Man. Guys, listen, that's it for this week's episode of Vibe with Five. I hope you guys keep on watching. Make sure hey, you subscribe. We're not finished it. We need to no, talk no, about that absolute yeah. shit show that happened on Friday night. Yeah, no, no, no. We're going to talk about that in a separate video, mate. So please right. make sure you keep watching. <laughs> but yeah, you know what? Just to let you guys know, whoever you, whoever's watching, we're looking at the analytics. And a lot of you guys haven't pressed the subscribe button. Yeah, we need me. Where's the subscribe? What are you what? doing? You what are you doing? What's going on? With the notification, by the way, we got the stats. All right. Mm. Don't let us call you out by name. But yeah, Joel make sure you like, share, out. comment. Out. Make sure you <laughs> like, share, comment, and subscribe. Joel Bayer, Rio Ferdinand, Stephen Housen, signing out. Peace.